Victor gasped in pain. He could feel his blood pooling beneath him and soaking into the mat whose fibres writhed hungrily. He clutched his chest where the thing had slashed him. He could feel ragged skin. God, he could feel organs. He didn't feel agony so much as a crushing pressure that threatened to snuff him out. Would he die first, he wondered, or would he slip into unconsciousness and fade away from there? Victor's phone rang from somewhere in the house. There was a wet crack and the ringing stopped. The executioner examined its slippery black claw, Victor's fluid soaked into the blade. The creature writhed briefly, then stretched its gaping face wide. Inside, Victor could see a hastily assembled series of shapes, like an instrument made of meat. They began to quiver with slow but deliberate resonance. I was made, the executioner rasped. It lingered on those words, then emitted a series of guttural clicks. This was made to kill you. It tilted its head as the hell house slurped at Victor's blood. But you will already be dead soon. The creature loomed forward again and Victor braced for the end, but it was only sitting down. The executioner was watching him die. Why? He managed. Why this? This was cells. We were cells, and you made us pain. We hate you. We hate so much of all of you. His vision was starting to blacken around the edges, but he continued to cling to life. Humans are very stubborn that way. I've done... He felt the blood in his mouth. I've done nothing to you. The executioner did not respond. It was many places. Sometimes it was in a containment cell behind twelve-inch plate glass. Sometimes it was beneath the Earth's crust. Sometimes it was in the minds of the people who saw it. Sometimes it was in a place we would describe as nowhere. Often it was in multiple places, but put more of itself in one location. For a while, it had been more in containment than any other area. During that time, it had been called EC-001. Now, it was not in containment, and it was not EC-001. It decided it would now be Brian. The noise was simple and pleasing. Brian had spread dense and uniform through the town, a labyrinth of probability and potential presence. It did this based on intuition it was learning to follow and feelings it was learning to learn. It potentially received an outgoing transmission that matched the scope of its search. A small shift and potentiality became definitive. It intercepted the signal with clumsy, inexperienced actions, and the transmission pinged uselessly into a place that could not be reached. Its colours fluctuated distressingly. It received another transmission that matched the scope of its search. This time it was more cautious. It discovered the location, backtracked the source, and absorbed a flood of new information. It condensed itself into a singular position and closed the distance. Ozmia, the robot whispered through the cracks in the door. It drew its fingers through the holes and peeled back the painted wood. Its angry engine was mixed with splintering that stood testament to its strength. What do you want with me? She finally screamed over the sound of the thrumming. The effort of the shout slowed her progression to the window, but she valued answers over time. 
What are you? The robot did not answer. It did not know. It had no story. It was only a thing that acted on a script. The robot was not after Oslia because she had hurt it, or because it needed something from her. The robot was after Oslia because it was. Oslia was being hunted because pure chance had woven this malignant abstraction, and pure chance had made her its target. Oslia knew the robot wanted to kill her, but believed there was more. There was not. Oslia pulled herself up to the window. Behind her, the robot squeezed through the remains of the pulled apart door. Oslia undid the latch. The robot came closer. Oslia pushed open the window. The robot came closer. Oslia hoisted herself over. The robot grabbed her ankle. A leaden coolness spread through her body. Her arms gave out. Her legs gave out. She was pulled back inside. The sensation coursing through her body was cold and impervious. She tried to fight it, but there was nothing to rally against and no weapon to muster. It was everywhere in her. She could not find the strength to care she'd even been caught, or the pain when the robot's second hand, more claw than anything else, dug into her shoulder. The robot twisted her around to see her face and she couldn't tell if the snaps were its body or her own. It peered at her face and its jagged beak opened wider. There was a flash of light and heat. The sensation in her body stuttered and recoiled as the robot emitted a pained wheeze. The hands gripping her relinquished and she fell to the ground. Her partially reawakened body and mind enacted their last directive to clamber out the window. Unfortunately, they were not prepared for the slope of the roof, or the impact of the dirt below. There was a harsh thud, and Oslia made a pained wheeze of her own. If she hadn't broken anything before, she'd definitely done so now. The smothering fatigue was gone, but it was replaced by pins and needles of pain all over her body. Above her, the robot crawled out of the window and onto the roof. It looked down at her and groped in her direction, as if it did not understand gravity. Oslia, it was saying again. Oslia. Her eyes caught sight of a small flying object hovering to its right, and then there was another explosion of light and heat. There was more percussion to the blast this time. Pieces of the roof clattered down to the dirt, caked in blue sludge. If she had been up there, it would have been her blood on those pieces. The robot's wheeze became a screech. It stopped reaching for her and turned to face the flying thing. The thing in question loosely resembled a sea urchin. It had a red, steaming center and spikes that turned from blue to angry black before her eyes. It was... Brian? She thought she was done being surprised. Earlier on, she thought she was done being anything. Both were wrong. Oslia's prone body stared in disbelief as EC-001, the entity she had always thought of as Brian, smouldered like a hot coal and shot a spray of pellets toward the robot. The pop was like a firework, and the ground shook slightly. The robot weathered the blow, but pieces of its shell broke off and tumbled away. It screeched again, and its clawed hand stretched out to make a clumsy swipe at its aggressor. There was a blur of neon and static. For a brief moment, it seemed the robot was swiping at several areas at once, but Brian was just between all of them. The robot's arm suddenly solidified and wrenched away, pulling the entire space out of focus. The distortion was followed by a loud crack. Brian fled several feet away intermittently bobbing. Its fiery center blinked a few times like a dying light bulb. The robot's engine shifted into a deeper tone, and Brian answered with a defined crackle. While they fought, Oslia worked to distance herself from the scene. Her wrists hurt when she splayed her hands along the ground, but it was nothing compared to the agony in her legs. 
One of her ankles wasn't bending. The pain was so much worse than the numbness, but it reminded her what she had left to lose. Her assassin and her defender battled on the remains of her roof, and it was all she could do to get away. She wished she'd bought that firearm after all. She felt useless. She pressed her hands into the dirt and dragged herself towards the edge of the yard. Something was itching in the back of her brain, fighting for attention. Something about the yard. The firearm. The robot twitched and whirled to face her. In reaction, its enemy zoomed closer and released another percussive blast of energy. More shards flew from the robot. This time it shuddered violently and pitched forward off the roof. It hit the ground face first, and there was the unmistakable sound of breaking glass. Oslia paused hopefully, but the robot drew its shoulders higher and dragged itself like her. It lifted its face and behind its broken screen was a nightmare of darkness and lightning. The robot may have said her name, but not through mouth or machine. Brian hovered lower. It strafed the robot doggedly, blasting off chunks with precise shots. Wires were beginning to snake out of the cracks in the robot's surface. Some of them whipped angrily at Brian and forced it to keep distance. Others arched like the legs of a spider and pulled their body's bulk towards Oslia. It was gaining on her. She looked back and saw it closing in like it had done so much that day. It was heedless of the thing that spun around it with centrifugal regularity. Almost like... Oslia's mind recalled the spinning woman, the yard, her desire. The woman had been staring at something in the ground. Something very important. Oslia always assumed it was something only the woman understood. A part of the world she'd never play a part in. But perhaps that wasn't it. Perhaps it was just the opposite. She was at the scene so ingrained in her memory. She stopped dragging herself and half incredulous at her own actions, began to dig. The robot crept faster and faster as more wiry protrusions poured from its shell. Brian would likely kill it, but not before it fulfilled its intent. The wires snaked up Oslia's leg and wrapped around her ruined ankle. She felt their electric hum on her flesh as they slowly tightened. She did not stop digging. Her hands felt metal as her neck felt coils of wire. Without thinking, she twisted around. Her fingers worked the freshly unearthed mechanism between them. The Magnum fired a shot through the robot's broken face and nestled somewhere in its broken body. It stopped again, jerked twice. Some of its wires went limp. Brian jumped, as if surprised, then zoomed close to her. An orange point appeared on the surface of its core and stared pointedly at the weapon between her hands. Then it darted back to the robot and unleashed a flood of identical rounds. The sound was deafening. It seemed to Oslia at least a hundred bullets had fired at once. It was so loud she reflexively shut her eyes. Something in her ear clenched and the harsh sound dimmed to a light ringing. Oslia felt the wires uncoil from her body. She opened her eyes and saw the robot reduced to scrap and ruined earth. Nothing moved. Traces of frayed wires emerged from the twisted heap and splayed limply amidst the smoke and the steam. More than a few curved in the direction of her body. It looked like an avant-garde art piece. She shook her head to clear the ringing. When that didn't work, she looked around for Brian. She opened her mouth to speak, but Brian was gone. It had already slipped away through some means to some other purpose. Something was burbling beneath the ringing. A hand came from behind and waved in front of her face. She blinked at the sudden intrusion, and the hand gravitated to her shoulder. More hands were on her body now, helping her up. They wore black gloves and moved with practiced ease. Oslia did not fight, as NAPD officers escorted her off the property.